Hi, this is Colin Sandy from Sandy Audiovisual, and we're going to take a look at the USB control panel for the Decimator MDHX up, down, cross converter and scaler. So we're going to go here to Applications and the Decimator Utility. So you click on this on the Mac, and you see you'll get an error. Can't be opened because it is from an unidentified developer. And, uh, of course, uh, that is due to the settings I have on my Mac, which I believe are the default, that will only allow apps that are certified or identified by um, Apple, either from the Mac Store and um, from identified developers, which I guess Decimator is not yet. But uh, not to worry. We can go down. Let's see. Right-click. And I'll open that. Can open. Should be bouncing here in the toolbar. It is. Okay. So here we have the decimator USB control panel version 2.0.1. And you'll see that. Uh, there's nothing coming into the device at the moment. Uh, if you hit scan, okay. So it found the MDHX, which is the device I'm using. All right, we can load the defaults from here, update the firmware, uh, have the status, your control scaling, audio, setup. And if you looked at the previous um, video, uh, you saw me going through these menus on the device's built-in screen, which is very handy uh, when you're doing work in the field. You don't have to uh, fudge with uh, a computer and try to figure out what you're doing. It's there pretty clear for you on its LCD screen. It has nice big buttons that are um, in great contrast to the case. So you can Really, you know, in the dark environments of most most AV setups, you can still tell what you're doing. It has a nice bright screen and uh, very easy to navigate and set this up. But, of course, if you're pretty much going to use the device for the same thing every time and you want to set it up very quickly, this USB control panel is very useful. So we have here under control your um, SDI output source, your HDMI output source, your HDMI output type. Now there is no SDI output type. Pretty much um, whatever you tell the SDI output to to be in terms of aspect ratio and resolution is going to spit out. Um, so there's no controls for that. On the HDMI side you can see you can do from no audio up to 8 channel audio and uh, various color spaces RGB um, from 422 to 444 and uh, YCBCR 422 to 444 and this DVI option is um, useful if you're going to say a remote monitor and you don't want that audio signal sent to that monitor because uh, of course someone could turn volume up on that uh, monitor and that's usually not what you want uh, downstage you're using a sound reinforcement system so, you know, just to avoid any kind of mishap there on the audio side, you can completely have no audio pass at all. Now, scalar source, that is uh, asking you what source or what input from the MDHX you want to go into the scalar. And the scalar, again, can uh, sometimes be referred to in the manual as the duck or DUC or the down-up converter, the DUC. So is it going to convert what's coming in on the SDI input or convert what's coming in on the HDMI input? Right? You can have um, any of your outputs come in, loop, be uh, processed, or just go straight through. Uh, scalar reference, uh, you can either have it as the uh, source or just free run. All right. Now there's no signal background color. Uh, this device constantly outputs a signal. 
which is very helpful for um, especially those cheaper consumer monitors that will give you that no input um, display or something funky or just won't sync up unless it has something. This is always sending out a reference black, which is great. Um, if black is confusing because uh, something else in your chain might also send out black, you can send out um, any number of colors. Unfortunately, at this point, when I tried to set the background color, the application crashed, and I haven't been able to uh, get it back up. I suppose I'd have to restart to do that, but uh, from everything that I've gone through on this device and even the uh, the control panel, um, everything else seemed to have worked just great. Um, so it'll probably need to be a 2.0.2 to fix that bug in the software.